The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Good morning, folks. Welcome to the January 11th, the terrific Thursday edition of today's Trader's Edge show. I'm your host, Stevie Perseverance Rhodes who absolutely knows that each of us should always be pioneers of our future versus prisoners of our past. Hope everyone out there is having a great day. And hey, let's make sure we have an extraordinary one. Now, the easiest way to do that is to always remember that life is happening for us, not to us. That's right. When you and I make that one little two by four shift, it means we can find the gift in every set of circumstance that life is going to toss at us. Now, today, you and I, we're going to go check on the circumstance of these markets. We'll go figure out what those bulls and bears, what those buyers and sellers are communicating to you and I at just past 11 o'clock in the morning. I do want you to know I'm absolutely grateful for your presence here. But even more important than that, and that's this, during this next 53 minutes, I am here to serve you. So feel free to pick up that phone, dial on in at 877-927-6648 if you've got a question. But you can't call in. We've got your back. Go ahead and send me an email. Send that off early. Send that to Steve at TFNN.com. Inside the subject heading, please put radio show question. Of course, if you're inside that tiger's den, well, then any and every ping will do. So let's go ahead and get this show started on Terrific Thursday. Of course, this is Tiger Financial News Network. I'm Steve Rhodes. Welcome to the show. we got a sea of red out there. All the sectors, with the exception of the energy sector, trading the downside. All the U.S. indices that we track, trading to the downside as well. 200 points for the Dow, uh, 28 points for this S&P, 91 points for the NASDAQ. The Russell's off 30, semi's down 36. You've got gold trading out at 2,032. That's up four bucks. With silver down 21 pennies, she's trading at 22.85. Lights we crude, trading out at 73.53. That's up two bucks and change. National gas up 11 cents. 3.15 is its print. And the 30-year Treasury printed out at 121.29. That's off eight ticks so let's figure out what all this might mean out here and let's begin by taking a look at the daily and the equity future contracts to do that we're going to go ahead and switch screens we'll get over to that white background screen here you'll see that uh, the es mini you'll see the different profile than the one that we looked at earlier when i did the 11 a.m update you'll see here you've got that profile that forms at the bottom 4715 i've learned to accept the fact that sometimes even with the same map we get different answers out there at least with regard to the trading gods out there. And I've learned that that is life happening for me, not to me out there. So now we've got a couple of different levels. In fact, how we can use this is the level on the chart that we looked at at the open during that nine panel update. Let me see where that's at. That level is at the 47.99 area. It's really 47.99.50. We're trading at 47.89 right now. So I would say you'd play it like this. If in fact we get a close below that 47.99 area, then odds favor that we move down to 47.15, or at least that would, that's what the intent would be from a daily perspective out there. Now, we continue to take a look at the daily uh, or the equity future charts out here. The important thing to realize is that the weekly chart, so the longer term, intermediate term, so we're going to call the daily chart at this stage here the noise, the weekly chart not so noisy. If we take a look at that weekly time frame chart, we have a, a TD9 count top. Whenever you get in, there's a Wave 7 top that's out there as well, a potential Wave 7 top. I would call it a Wave 7 top. You don't need two tops. You just need one. So we'll just go with the real easy one to clarify, TD9 count top out there. Whenever you get any kind of a top, all that it really tells you and I is that buyers, this is important to get through our minds out here, that all that sellers actually are able to, are, are really unleashed to do is to try to take price back to support. We don't know if price is going to break support or not. At least when the top is formed out there, we can use things like volume. If price is moving lower or if it's a bottom, if price is moving higher, we can use volume. But we really use that oscillator and change line as our guideline. At this stage here, you can see that the oscillator and change line has been tested and rejected. 
I did a study. I've done several studies out there. The most recent study went back into the 29 top and went back into the uh, 2000 top and went back into the uh, 2007 top out there. And the interesting, interesting thing that I've, and even took a look at all of 2023, let's just take a look at the patterns. And you'd be amazed how many times we've got daily topping patterns and where price found support was at that oscillator and change line. So it needs to be respected. Now, you don't need to respect it, but I'm going to respect it based upon the studies that I've done out there. So we're not going to get down to 47.15 uh, unless, uh, well, in this case here, if we got to 47.15, we'd be testing, in essence, the weekly oscillator and change line and the bottom of that daily profile for the ES Mini. Now, in the case of the NQ, also a weekly TD9 count top out there. Price got down last week and tested the top of that profile didn't close below it that's still bullish and price is now above that green oscillator change line it too is bullish the meaning there is really that price should go target its most recent swing point high well it actually has done that right the low of that week the low of the week of december 29th was at 16938 the high of this week has been up at 17057 so if we close below that swing point bar number nine of that TD9 count, 16, 938.25 tomorrow, we would have a test and a rejection of a swing low out there. Now, I don't have the volumes in order to be able to determine whether there's, but we can go take a look at the volumes inside the SPY and get a fairly decent feel. Well, in this case, here would be the Qs and get a fairly decent feel out there. On a daily time frame, the daily time frame, Price has found resistance, you can see. That's the beauty of this oscillator and change line, both from the bullish and the bearish standpoint. Now, it's green, so it's not really bearish, but it's, it tells us about a significant level of resistance. That currently is printed at 16,975 and change out there. So it's held as resistance. The question is, will price get back inside its profile? If it does close back below 16,832.85 uh, at the session end, then that would be signaling to you and I that price may make its way back to support. And that's it's by uh, that's its uh, bullish structured profile area between 16,417 and 16,583. But still, we must respect that the weekly chart has done its thing at this stage here. And intermediate term wise, this could be telling us well at least that it wants to get back and and maybe take out those highs. Well, if we take a look at the Dow Equity future contract, that's the one that has not fallen. It does have a Rhodes momentum indicator top, but again, all price has done is push its way back to support. In this case here, the support for the Dow Equity future contract contract is the bottom of its daily profile. That level, and that's an important area for us to watch today, is 37,606. The Dow equity future contract is the only equity future contract that has not given us a profile change in trend to signal out there. What do you mean by that, Stevie? What I mean by that is we go take a look at, whoops, that's not the, well, maybe it is the chart. Yeah. So if we take a look at this chart out here, I got the ES Mini near the left hand corner. You can see that on the trading session, I'm going back to uh, August uh, 2nd of 2023, we get a close below the bottom of its profile, generating a change in trend signal out here. We got that same type of change in trend signal right back here on the trading day of January the 3rd. That still is in place out here or in play out here. The only way that gets negated is a close above 4841. That's what makes it kind of difficult, not kind of difficult, but that's what makes it difficult with regard to the NQ charts. Why? Because yesterday price closed above the top of his profile. So we have a change in trend signal to the downside, a change in trend signal to the upside. But if you look at that Dow equity future contract, bottom of the profile has held the support all the way up since that October low. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We get back to this break. Let's look at natural gas and a few other requests that have come in, like Mosaic, maybe Lennar, the semis. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. 
You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the Opening Call newsletter at TFNN.com. The Opening Call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the Opening Call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters Letters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, educating investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Welcome back, uh, folks. We're looking at the uh, set of charts. We took a look at this yesterday, maybe even the day before. Of the uh, This is of the Dow, daily time frame chart that we're taking a look at. It shows you how the Dow is trading not only in the U.S. currency, but all the other major currencies out there. We hit a new all-time high this morning inside the Dow, priced in dollars, priced in euros, priced in yen, not, not priced in uh, pounds yet. So dollars, euros, yen, Australian dollars. Uh, the uh, Dow priced in uh, Swedish Corona is now inside its swing point or is destined. It's an all-time high swing point out there. Uh, what else? So, so that's what, so. Those are really bullish conditions out there. Um, if the Great British Pound was making a new high today as well, and we started to get a sell-off, that could spell some trouble out there. Because typically, what you'll see is you'll see when there's any kind of significant top out here. And I don't. I, I, at this stage, I don't see that. But uh, if you know, if we get some signals, then then okay, okie dokie. Um, but and 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 when though we have those major tops, you typically have within the same day, uh, at least within 24 hours, uh, price making highs in euros, yen, and pounds, as well as U.S. dollars out there. That's with regard to the uh, Dow. The S&P 500 has also made some new all-time highs today. Uh, those new all-time highs came in the euros, in yen in Australian dollars and also in uh, pounds out here. Um, so again, these are bullish conditions. So you, we just want to, you know, as we're navigating this market, it's really important to understand what's going on uh, across the uh, board out across the globe. And especially with the concentration of capital in the U.S., really important for us to be paying attention to that. All right, so let's go get into these requests out here. The first one is to take a look at natural gas. Now, natural gas is attempting to form a new profile here. We're going to change screens momentarily. First, want to make sure that new profile is, yeah, it is on that screen. But price is trading above it right now. Hold, hold on a second here. Hold your horses, Stevie. 
market update. Okay, so I've got two different sets of profiles. So um, I haven't changed my screens just yet. I'm going to open this up here or take a look at the February contract. So on this screen, this screen shows resistance. The top of this new profile is at $3.21. When I change over to my white background screen, it's gonna come out at 313. So what's the number that you would use out here, ESV, XM? You would use $3.21. If price is able to close above that, well, first of all, I don't know if this profile is going to take hold or not. It's uh, attempting to form as we speak right now. It looks pretty solid. It's been in place since very early this morning out here. Just different profile levels that we've got. Not at the bottom. So the bottom, you've got a bullish structure profile, 261 and 269. And that's exactly what we have on my other set of charts out there. So if we take a look at retracement levels from the low to the high, yesterday we got down. And this morning we got down to the 0 .382 retracement area. That's at about $2.93. I'm trying not to sneeze just because that's not the ideal thing to do inside a live mic. That's why I'm looking to the upside, but they're probably not showing me looking to the upside. I've heard, and I've tried it a few times, that works. It seemed to have worked this time. Okay, so now back to natural gas out here. So with regard to natural gas, now if price did close above the uh, top of that profile at uh, 321, that would be telling us it's at least going to go or should at least take a run for that high that took place a couple days ago on January the 9th. Now, let's go ahead and switch our screens, get to our multi time frame screen out here, see what it has to say. Uh, the folks over at... Um, the folks over at Season X were kind enough to go ahead and get that uh, natural gas... Um, uh, bad data uh, resolved out here so now I can pull up its charts. So its charts, we take a look at natural gas, we go back 33 years. Remember, we were I was using, I think, 16 years worth of data inside the UNG. But this is really our preference. So we are still in a very, in an unfavorable seasonal time frame for natural gas. So is it just the cold weather that's out there? Could be, could be, I say could be. So natural gas typically makes its bottom, or at least it has over a 33 year period of time, makes its bottom by February 19th. The first bottom typically comes in on Valentine's Day, right around Valentine's Day, and just to warm up everybody's hearts, I would say. But then you get into the very favorable seasonal cycle time frame. The type that takes us up into the June area, typically it's June 15th, then we move lower for a month or so into the July 20th level, and then we move higher once again into the October time frame, and then it's back down into the February time frame. So we're in the, we're in, well, we were in a favorable period of time, that was up to a few days ago, and now we've switched back to an unfavorable period. You can see January and February are typically horrible months uh, for natural gas, the only thing worse than that is uh, November and December out there, so that's the seasonal pattern out here and what that says is if we take a look at the monthly time frame chart here for natural gas what we don't have is any kind of a bottoming pattern we're trading below profiles doesn't mean natural gas won't try to make a run for the bottom of its profile up at 374 but we don't have any kind of bottom pattern there we take a look at the weekly time frame chart same set of signals out here now in the case of the weekly time frame chart just because it doesn't have one of stevie's bottoms doesn't mean it didn't bottom and how we make a determination of that is can, can price take out resistance? Well, there's really two levels of resistance that we had here. There's really three levels. The first level in this case was the top of its profile, 266. It closed above that last week. We're trading above it this week. That tells us about a real breakout or change in trend profile to the upside for the weekly time frame for natural gas. So what does that mean, Stevie? That means that what it wants to do on an intermediate term time frame is make a move up to that third level of resistance. That's at 379. That's courtesy of that TD9 count breakdown pattern. Now, on the daily time frame, we had a TD9 and wave number seven bottom pattern out there. And the TD9 count on the daily that formed a few days back, well, that was negated immediately. Telling us about a strong upward momentum move. But we do have this new profile that is in place out here. We do have that seasonal pattern. Again, if you get a close today above that profile level calculated on the signal, that's at two point, I'm sorry, that is at 3.218. That's gonna suggest we get back to those highs and perhaps even higher, which opened up that weekly time frame chart out there. So on the daily time frame, no topping pattern, just a new profile to be paying attention to. If we take a look at the intraday charts out here, 
For example, the 30-minute time frame chart, we can see that for the last hour and a half, this thing has been trading nonstop to the upside and price is taking on an area of resistance. That's at $3.21. That's its breakdown resistance level. That's tying right into the top of that weekly profile, uh, daily profile we looked at on that black background screens. So I don't have any other topping signals that I see out here on any of the other charts. It's just the 30-minute where prices run into resistance that is tying right into that daily resistance level. So ESVXM, did I give you the information that you were looking for? I hope the answer to that question is yes, but if not, let me know, and we'll make sure that we get that. Let's go see if we can give G-Man the information on Mosaic. I believe we were looking at Mosaic yesterday. Uh, you're looking for an entry point, and we were looking for a potential bottoming pattern out here. Nope, that's not the case. That wasn't the case. Sorry, Stevie was thinking of something else. What we do have in Mosaic is you have a clear A to B equals CD to the downside pattern. It's made more than the one level out here. You can see that. I'll just simply draw in the one-to-one -one area. Then we'll just simply move that over to the highest high that forms after that low. So as we can grab that. Then we can, you can see it's made well more than a one to one. It's probably around the one to 1.618. It doesn't really matter where it's at in the expansion unless we're trying to come up the price projection level. That's not what we're doing. As far as mosaic, it's not a buy until it generates a bullish reversal candle. If it does, then you'll have a Gartley buy pattern or a buy the uh, D point pattern out here. Price is now trading inside its swing point uh, from November 8th. That uh, November swing point had volume of 6 million shares. You were moving down yesterday with uh, 4 million shares. Today so far, the first two hours of trading 1 million. So you're pulling back with lighter volume. You still need a bullish reversal candle for a buy in Mosaic. MOS is the ticker symbol. Steve Broge with TFN. We'll be right back. Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly Gold Report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at tfnn.com. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den. Hosted at Discord, TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den. Available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts. 
while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tiger's Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, uh, folks. Uh, last night I went to see the movie Boys in the Boat. Uh, a couple of friends of uh, ours had uh, seen that, or read that book, not seen the movie, read the book, loved the book. I wasn't familiar with the story. It's a true story. Stevie loves movies that are uh, true stories out there. Um, so if you do see it and you're looking to do something or maybe got cold weather or what have you, it's out now. I think it's a great book. It's a, and, and, it was, and the reason I don't think I heard about it was because it really goes back to the uh, uh, 1936 Olympics. And Jesse Owens really kind of overshadowed uh, everybody during, uh, during that Olympic period of time. I'm a role. I row every uh, morning, pretty much seven days a, a week out there. Pretty incredible the speeds that even those guys in 1936 were producing compared to what I row at out there. But anyways, it's a great movie, so I just throw that out there. Let's go take a look at Lennar. L-E-N is a ticker symbol. This is for Nitram inside the uh, Tiger's Den. Right now, we take a look at Lennar out here. Price is trading above the top of its uh, daily profile. Now, that was a bearish structured profile out there nitram so that is a bullish signal now it is trading just slightly below its oscillator and change line does that mean anything well it means that at this stage here it may have lost its momentum if it remains below it you could see a pullback really to the 149.88 level or if you were lucky enough you would get a pullback to 148.03 price has been above the top of that bearish structured daily profile for what today will now be two consecutive sessions when you close above the top of a bear structured profile, counter trend moves to the downside, will find or should find support at either the top of that profile or the center. More times than not, it's a center area. That's at 148.04. If we take a look at the weekly time frame chart, price is just dealing with profile resistance. It's trading right into it right now, 152.46. We're at 152.50. If it can close above that level at week end, that would be a positive. But it is also dealing with a swing point from back on December 11th. 20 million shares, we're at Thursday, and you're only at 7.5 million shares. On a daily time frame, the swing point had volume of 8.8 .8 million shares. Yesterday was some nice volume to the upside. It was 3.6 million shares. So Nitram, it does not look like to Stevie, from a volume perspective, that this is getting ready to take out the highs out there. Um, but it doesn't mean that it's bearish either prices above resistance levels and that includes the monthly time frame a quick peek of the monthly let me just update the charts yeah there's no top there in fact if anything last month price took out its td9 count top so everything looks pretty good here um what's um, so what do you do i don't know what you're looking for but that's the review of night of uh, lennar so i hope that that review helps you out you also want to take a look at the semiconductor index i don't i think you're looking to the short side of it for that let's just go look at the semiconductor multi time frame set of charts out there and try to get a feel for what they're communicating to you and i and for that we're going to use uh, we've got a quarterly a monthly i've got the weekly the daily that's your top row and then we go to 3065 130 and 195 out there so on a monthly time Time frame with regard to the semis out here um let's see here this high was at 4068.15 and last month we closed at 4175 so and the semiconductors on a quarterly basis negated a rose momentum indicator top and this is suggesting it wants higher price interesting on a monthly basis we had a key reversal bar that confirmed a rose momentum indicator top again that high was uh 4068.15 the close here was at 41.75. So the monthly chart also negated a Rhodes momentum indicator top. There's another Rhodes momentum indicator signal, but that requires a bearish reversal candle. So on a quarterly basis, the monthly basis out here at Nitram, the semis are mucho grande strong. The weekly chart, 
TD9 count, Roads Mint Dominicator top. We just switch this down just a tad out there. But what price has done, it's found support at that green oscillator and change line. That's the level to be watching for any kind of clues out here, Nitram. And that level right now is printed at 39.55. That's going to shift by a dollar or two to the upside or the downside. But if you get a close below that, that tells us on a weekly time frame, prices lost its momentum. And downside targets, you start looking at the monthly, the quarterly oscillator and change line, and the breakout level on the weekly chart, 3413, 3747, 3635. Those are the number areas out there. On a daily time frame, we have a Roadsman indicator top out here. Uh, so, and prices below that green oscillator and change line. So it's telling us that it has lost its momentum. Um, but it's really just kind of trading in a sideways-ish sideways ish that's all um pattern out here but not until price were to close above 4115 would that say that okay it is more of a neutral signal so right now the daily time frame is bearish the weekly time frame is neutral the monthly time frame is bullish and the quarterly time frame is bullish as well if we take a quick peek at those intraday charts out here does stevie see anything to assist anybody and the answer there is not really the only thing I have is this 30-minute time frame. It's still in effect out here. It's at Rosemont to Indicator Top. Uh, price might be targeting the 39.5605 level. That was a uh, TD9 count breakout area for that 30-minute time frame. So, Nitram, I hope that helped you out with regard to SOXS, what it's doing on all those multiple time frames. We're going to request to go take a look at Lightspeed Crude. I'll close those out when I come back. But let's go take a look at Lightspeed Crude. And let's look at its multi-set of charts out here. This is for... What the heck? I didn't want to do that. No, 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 no. Just get over there. There we go. And this is for Captain Triage inside the Tiger's Den. So on a monthly basis, you can see price consolidated inside its uh, monthly profile from the Roads Mintum Indicator top four or five months ago, just a consolidation inside that uh, pattern. On a weekly time frame, price consolidated with inside its profiles. You've got support at 69.54, resistance at 77.34. On a daily time frame, you got a consolidation with inside its daily profile, support at 70.14, and there's another support level of price for the close below that down at 67.98. Your resistance area is 75.44. 43, that's the center of its bearish structured uh, daily profile. Your real resistance area is going to be at 76.18, then above that, 77.55. What do we have going on on an intraday basis? The only thing to really be paying attention to, I would say, would be the 120-minute chart. You're going to complete bar number 8, and we get to uh, 12 noon, about 23 minutes from now. That says you could get a TD9 count top in Lightspeed Crude um, sometime between uh, 2 and 4 o'clock this afternoon out there. So I'd be watching that pattern. Pattern. I don't see a 30-minute pattern that's really assisting us there. Oh, wait a minute here. 30 minutes right. I wasn't even in the right area. Jeez, I caught that. All right, so now to the 30-minute time frame chart. So this looks pretty bullish. The 30-minute chart actually negated a TD9 count top. It did that at 9.30 this morning. So I would say, Captain, I'd be watching the two-hour time frame chart, at least that piece of the analysis and the other pieces were correct as well. I was just a little off-center when I took a look at that 30-minute time frame chart. So that's what I see when I take a look at Lightspeed Crude. Bob in Spokane wanted to take a look at G-O-L-D. So let's go take a look at, uh, that is um, uh, Barrick Gold out there. Let's pull that up on our screen out here. I believe this is Barrick Gold. So what do we have on Barrick Gold? Barrick Gold could be forming an A to B equal C D to the downside. So the swing point that it's dealing with was from January 4th. That swing had 20 million shares. So far today, this has done almost 5 million shares. So you got 5 times 3, you got 15. So prices coming into that swing point with lighter volume. Nonetheless, if you see gold, that is bare gold, close below 1705 it'll still trigger an a to b equal cd to the downside that price projection level would actually take it i believe it would take it below its td9 count breakout area let's find that out before we go off the line here and go to uh, a commercial break oh how about that it would take it right down basically to it at around 1626 steve Rhodes with tfnn we'll be right back Currencies, commodities, and bond markets are as important as ever right now with how they're driving the volatility in equity markets across the globe, which is why it's a great time to try out Teddy Kegstat's Tiger Forex report. 
Teddy Kegstaff breaks down the Forex markets every Monday using his 30 plus years of experience as a trading veteran of futures, Forex, stocks, and options. Teddy releases his weekly Tiger Forex report every Monday morning with coverage of all the major currency pairs, including the dollar index, the euro dollar, pound dollar, dollar Swiss, dollar yen, as well as many more. And he also has weekly coverage of the crude oil market and the 30 year T bonds as they both influence Forex markets tremendously. When you sign up for the Tiger Forex Report, you also gain instant access to Teddy's 60-minute webinar archive he just hosted, Forex Strategies and Fundamentals, What is Behind the Tiger Forex Report. For all the details and to start your 30-day Tiger Forex Report subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, or SPXS. Direction's daily S&P 500 bull and bear leveraged ETFs. Direction leveraged ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor for Side Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Welcome back. So just to uh, complete the uh, charts here for uh, Barrick Gold, we've got that A to B equals CD to the downside. That's what it's trying to form right now, even though it's doing it with uh, without volume. It still suggests a move down towards the 1640-ish area to 1626. The weekly chart, which doesn't have a top, does have a new profile. And price here, watch 1685. If price closed below 1685 and 1649 is in the cards, that would be the bottom of the weekly profile. Just a consolidation with inside the monthly time frame. So, Bob, I hope that helps you. I don't see any kind of bottom signal on an intraday chart, such as a 30-minute. I'll put that up on our screen for us. And you can see that there's no bottom signal there. So it does look like Barrick Gold, G-O-L-D, wants to continue to move lower. Let's go take a look at uh, Budweiser out here. B-U-D is the ticker symbol. And I apologize, I didn't write down who made that request out there. But we do take a look at uh, Bud. It is confirming a road's momentum indicator top as we speak. Now, price is back inside its profile. It's a profile that's actually forming today. That profile has support at uh, 63.81 and resistance up at the 6543 level out there. So because you've got a Rose momentum indicator top, odds favor that Bud wants to trade down to 6381. If it closes below 6381, you will have a profile change in trend signal. That profile change in trend signal would then suggest a move back towards 5830. That's what's coming from the daily time frame chart out there. 
I also see a wave number seven top that's going to be confirmed today for Budweiser. Doesn't matter that it has two tops, all it needs is one out there. So I'd be watching 63.81. You've got a TD nine count top that is still in place out here on the weekly time frame that only gets negated with a close above 65.01. We're at 64.72 right now. That suggests that price would pull back to test support, but it already did that last week. And that support level was the top of its profile, 63.52. So you still got 63.81 that's in place out here. That doesn't really change the character of the weekly time frame, which does have a TD9 count top, but a signal is somewhat neutral right now because support held. And on a monthly time frame, you've got a good old-fashioned consolidation within its profiles, 55.80 at support, 67.09 as resistance. So you got that Rosemont indicator top today. For Budweiser, I would expect that that should trade lower. Let's go take a look at our next request. That's from Duncan Steve. He'd like to take a look at Palantir. PLTR is a ticker symbol out there. We take a look at PLTR. That's not it. Oh, shoot. I forgot to correct that. Ah, uh, Steve-o, Steve-o, Steve-o. Okay, dokie. Uh, oh, I know what I can do just to not uh, be screwing a couple things up at the same time. Okay, just got to put that on my work list. So let's uh, get those charts for PLTR fired up on my screen. It's just going to take a moment to uh, do that. Uh, and I think the question, I don't know, I think the question is maybe just a general review of Palantir. And Palantir right now, it is trading with inside its daily profile. It's got support at 1589 and resistance at 1679. So it's just been consolidating with inside that for the last four trading sessions, that really ever since it formed. Um it doesn't, you know, I can find a buy the D point. There's really two A to B equals CD patterns out here. The second one, the larger one, doesn't look like it completed. But let me just make sure of that. My eyes could certainly be wrong. But um, let's just take a quick peek and throw that out there. But there's a smaller one. Yeah, the larger one hasn't. The smaller one would stop right here at the swing point of November 27th. So since we did get that gap to the upside, it does have a buy the D point pattern, technically speaking. And this is what we're doing is technically speaking. And you just have, uh, but you've got that red oscillator and change line at the top of the profile. That's your key area to be watching, observing, Duncan. Uh, the chart patterns have uh, taught us that. And that's at 1679. That's your key area to watch. On to the downside. Weekly chart. You've got a roads meant to indicator top, price consolidated with inside this profile. So if those lows get taken out, those are the lows from January 5th. That's at the level of 1566. You're going to head down towards 1423. Nothing here on the monthly chart to help us out with regard to Palantir. So, Steve-O, I hope that helps you out with regard to Palantir. G-Man wants to take a look at Harmony. H-M-Y is the ticker symbol there. And I must have, what did I do? I really screwed up. Nice going there, Steve-O. I had all this stuff all set, and then I went ahead and screwed it up. All right, well, let's take a look at Harmony out here. Let's see what it's doing. So Harmony is going to go ahead and complete a TD Nine out bottom today. This is the bar following bar number nine. As it's moving back into a prior swing point, that's a swing point from back here on December 13th. That had 6.1 million shares. Today, Harmony's done 1.8, so it's coming back with, um, well, similar a little bit lighter, but not exactly light volume. Uh, we don't know what it's going to look like at day's end. So what should take place here, this is a cool thing for you, G-Man. You want to watch today's low, whatever that is. If price begins trading below it, close below it tomorrow, that tells you that Harmony is going to go tackle that 511 area. On a weekly time frame, Harmony is consolidating with inside its weekly profile out here. Let's see if there's any kind of top or bottom signal. No, I don't have anything. But because price has lost momentum, it's trading below that green oscillator and change line. 520 is open. So only if you get a close below today's low, whatever that is, come tomorrow out there, that would bring 511 to 520 into play. That's what I see when I take a look at ticker symbol HMYs. G-Man, I hope that that helps you out. Nut request was to take a look at gold in general. I believe that was for G-Man as well, but I might have been typing incorrectly, so it doesn't really matter. Let's take a look at Goldilocks in general out here. We've got our multi-time frame charts. So what gold is doing as we speak right now, it is close, it is trading below its breakout level at 20.29.20. That brings the next breakout area into play out here, and that's at 19.79. On a weekly basis, price is beginning to trade below that green oscillator and change line. 20.24 is the number. If it closes below that tomorrow, 19.84 becomes a price target. So you'd have 79 and 84 being the price targets. Those are the coming from the daily and the weekly time frame. Now, 
when I look to the intraday charts out here, what do we see? We see some road momentum indicator bottoms on the two hour, the four hour time frame chart, and those would be negated with a close below 2022.70. So far, that has not happened. So we've got prior bottoms, bottoming patterns, not just bottoms, but prior bottoming patterns that are being tested as we speak right now. So the interesting thing about gold, silver, no one asked about silver, so let me just go switch over to this chart, set of charts, and the GDX is the signals that we're getting. What signals, Steve-O? Well, you've got the uh, daily time frame. If you go all the way over to the right, let's start reading the GDX charts out there. Today's going to go ahead and confirm a TD9 count bottom. Watch today's low, whatever that is in the GDX. If price closes below that tomorrow, 2768 is in the cards. But you've got the GDX with a TD9 count bottom, and silver is now going to go ahead and complete a TD9 count bottom pattern today. Both should make their way up towards resistance. Well, in the case of silver, 2306 would be the first level, 2347 the second level. In the case of the GDX, it's 3011, period. There is no multiple levels out there. But what is gold doing out here? Gold's only in bar number seven. It's trading below that breakout area. So is the GDX going to go ahead and make a bottom without gold doing that? Maybe it just trades sideways. I don't know. But there are conflicting signals out here. Um, but I just wanted to share that with you, not to confuse you, but to provide you with the information that you were looking for. The last question, I believe that came in, was a request. And the question was, where is the buy the dip for the S&P 500? And really, the answer to that question, I really have to go take a look at the ES mini charts out here. On a daily time frame, you've got a confirmed, it looks like you'll get another confirmed Roach Mintum indicator top with today's bearish engulfing candle. Now, it's only 1150. If it looks like this at uh, four o'clock, you'd have a road to indicator top. That buy the deep point or that buy, that buy area then, according to the weekly chart, would be down at 46.70 or thereabouts. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, the Tiger's Den. Hosted at Discord, TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with the Tiger's Den. Available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In the Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts. 
while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tiger's Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back. Two more questions that we've got in the queue. The first one is take a look at the New York Stock Exchange, the advanced decline oscillator. That would be panel number three that we're looking at. Uh, we can see that that is down towards, getting towards the oversold reading. It's right now reading at minus 137. Uh, minus, if you get to minus 150, you close at minus 150 or below that. And it, uh, officially, uh, the New York Stock Exchange uh, would be in an oversold position out there. The next request was to take a look at ticker symbol EPD. So we're going to change back to our white background screen screens out here. And the EPD right now is trading at about 26.90. As we take a look at its uh, signals, it does have a, it looks, it appears that it has a sell the D point pattern, but let me just make sure here. Let's go A to B. Let's just move that over. If you will, move that over to that uh, B point and nah, maybe a little bit too far away from that. So you've got an A to B equals CD pattern. Um, the B point wasn't taken out though. Still have an A to B equals CD pattern, 2740. The question is, where is it going? You're trading above profile. You're trading above a green asset and change line. Those are bullish conditions for the daily time frame. So I'm going to have to go with this 2730-ish type area out there is a price projection level. On a weekly time frame chart, you have a consolidation with inside its profiles. You have price trading above the center of the profile. If it can close above that level tomorrow, really, the area you'd like to see it close above tomorrow would be 27 bucks even, Stephen. If it closes above 27 bucks, odd favor it's going to move higher at least test last week's low maybe get up to 27.72 the monthly time frame chart as we take a look at epd this is telling us wants to go target 27.83 so you got 27.83 27.72 and about 27.45 out there that's what the charts are signaling to you and i as we speak right now uh, last final request take a look at xpev out here xpev i don't see any kind of a bottom uh, pattern uh, the daily time frame, uh, the weekly time frame shows that price is now trading below weekly profile support. If it closes below that level, that level is 1244. 963 becomes the downside price target for ticker symbol X, PEV. Folks, thank you so much for all the requests out there. It makes it so much easier for Stevie. Let's do that same thing tomorrow, 11 a.m. sharp. Have a terrific Thursday. Be safe out there. Take care.